Movies, bitch. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Aaron Paul's first big flick, Need for Speed. Racing is an art. Revenge will surely come. But racing with passion, that's high art. And I think that's Toby Marshall driving the chariot of the gods. I'm willing to give six million dollars to anyone who puts a stop to him. We'll settle this behind the wheel. When Need for Speed debuted its first trailer, Breaking Bad fans joked that Jesse Pinkman drove right out of the series finale into this movie. Indeed, actor Aaron Paul can only hope for such a smooth transition. While many stars get their start on television, those that make their mark on the small screen tend to have a hard time not only jumping to the big screen, but staying there. Take Brian Cranston. Sure, he had a supporting role in Argo, but he also had to take on the Total Recall remake. And while he's co-starring in this summer's Godzilla, his most recent film, Cold Comes the Night, didn't even get a wide release, post all the Breaking Bad hoopla. So if Walter White is struggling, what hope does Jesse have? Luckily, he's starring not just in a racing video game adaptation, but the racing video game adaptation. Fast and Furious might rule the box office, but it's Need for Speed that rules the console. Debuting a decade ago in 1994, Need for Speed has released 20 installments and is the most successful car racing video game, period. But with all due respect to Aaron Paul, with that in mind, you'd think DreamWorks would fill this movie's tank with premium stars rather than unleaded. Paul has yet to prove he's a singular draw even on the small screen, and his co-stars are Dominic Cooper, best known as Tony Stark's young dad, and Imogen Poots from, well, I'm sure you've seen her somewhere. Michael Keaton tries to lend some star power with a supporting turn, while future maybe star Dakota Johnson also appears. Yep, that's Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith's daughter, who will be seen in Fifty Shades of Grey next year. But it's worth noting that this is the first fully narrative film from stunt performer turned director Scott Wow, who previously co-directed Active Valor. That film made a name for itself by portraying real-life active duty Navy SEALs in combat, and Wow has tried to make Need for Speed as realistic as possible as well. So I guess the only question left is whether or not Aaron Paul is a real-life active duty movie star. This is the best racing movie that I've ever seen. And believe me, I'm just as shocked to say it as you're probably shocked to hear it. And it seems that DreamWorks Live Action, even though it's not the same company anymore as DreamWorks Animation, has just as hard a time letting the general public know what they have on their hands in terms of quality. Because the trailer for this movie does not do it justice. Uh, they've been selling it as some generic racing movie that revolves around Aaron Paul's hopeful star power. But the selling point here that they were unable to get across, in my opinion, and I think from the box office results that are coming in so far uh, from anyone else's opinion is that this features the best car race sequences ever put on film. Uh, for instance, in the first race uh, when the movie just really picks up, it's good. The, the whole movie is surprisingly good uh, from story to acting as well. And I'll get into that in a moment. But the racing, as I said, is really the crown jewel here. It's what makes this movie special. But they start out at a, um, a drive-in and they're showing Steve McQueen's bullet, which of course, uh, as anyone who is a student of film uh, has probably heard, was one of the first really big car chase sequence films. It uh, changed the way car chases were portrayed in film and made them, uh, you know, a popular medium. Uh, and I would say this movie is just as revolutionary and iconic and could and should be a game changer. But unfortunately, because DreamWorks Live Action uh, can't let people know what they have, uh, is probably going to go largely unnoticed. So what makes the car chase sequences so good? Well, they're very well filmed. They are very realistic. Uh, the director, Scott Wow, from Active Valor, as I noted in the opening, uh, does just as good a job, really kind of like uh, focusing on the hardware. I'd say it's slick, but still gritty. It's very realistic. I mean, you sense the danger. And let me just also say, I felt the races here were very irresponsible. To, to race like this in the general public, uh, not on closed courses, is uh, really irresponsible. And sometimes it is hard to root for the characters when you can see the, the danger they're imposing on ordinary citizens. But it, the movie is just so good that you it kind of rises above that. But as I said, though, the movie does take responsibility for it and underlines the danger that exists there. And you really do feel it. And there are just there are some car crashes in here that are spectacularly filmed. And because of the 3D, Scott Wow 
puts you in the car. You experience this car, these car crashes. You experience the racing. You're not only next to Aaron Paul, you are Aaron Paul. And not only does he do that by does the director put you in the car, but he also does a great job uh, with depth perspective. You know, this isn't just some sloppy 3D conversion. Uh, he does a really nice job of putting something in the foreground, uh, and then the car's kind of racing in the background sometimes to really just give you like an, an, a, like an amazing painting that's come to life. It's that good. Or not a painting, I guess, a great car racing magazine. It's that kind of good cinematography. So it, just like a good video game, you're not only get a good feel for the cars, but the racetracks, where they're racing. And I think that's really, a, a, you know, a nice element. And there's a, you know, I think that not just the, the perspective isn't there just for the, to create 3D, but to really let you know where you are, to give, to really ground the race. And I think that's phenomenal. They race in Big Sur, they race in like a small town, uh, America, and like upstate New York it's supposed to be, uh, and, and, and through Detroit. It's just really well realized. I, I really thought it was good. And so the cars are also obviously really on display. And uh, this is a great advertisement for the Ford Mustang. They say Mustang so many times. I was like, Ford, you are really getting your money's worth. But the car looks great. I love the ga uh, gadgets on it. There's like, I don't know if this is in the actual car, uh, but if it is, they're going to sell a lot of Ford Mustangs. But you can see the speedometer reflected on the glass, and it's so cool. And you're in the driver's seat, so you feel like you're driving this Ford Mustang, and it's a great ride. Uh, so that's really well done. And they also have some great like Italian sports cars in the film as well. Everything looks really good. And then also, uh, there's the script. I think the script, while it's not like Shakespearean or like something that you're like, wow, that should get an, an Oscar, it's very solid writing. It does a great job of setting up all these different races without making them seem, okay, we're going to race again. Oh, you know. And you no, know, Fast and Furious, I have to say, I actually feel to some degree this is a little bit better than Fast and Furious as a racing movie. I think that Fast and Furious has become more a movie about, you know, crime and relationships, kind of like a Robin Hood kind of scenario. But in terms of just showing racing, I think this movie has it beat. Uh, it's, it's just it's just really well done. And because the races are also unique and you know what's at stake and, they, and the loca locations are different, so the script does a good job of setting up different scenarios for why Aaron Paul needs to race, which I think is very commendable. It also has some good motivation. I mean, so it's 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 simplistic, but there are some twists that make it unique and keep you engaged. It doesn't, you know, recently I critiqued uh, The Raid 2 for having kind of a generic script. And I would not call the script for Need for Speed uh, generic at all. I think it was, you know, quite inventive, but yet admirable in its simplicity, because it understood that the script was taking a back seat to the racing. Uh, also, the acting was good. Aaron Paul had some great moments where he was able to shine and kind of use his uh, Jesse-ness, you know, Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. But the standouts actually were Michael Keaton as this uh, racing announcer who was, he was channeling his Beetlejuice from his Beetlejuice days, so that was really fun to see. He brought a lot of energy to the film. Uh, and also Imogen Poots, uh, Imogen Poots, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name. She was really good. She was like P.L. Travers in a racing movie. They gave her that kind of fun British, uh, you know, um, Prop, prim and proper, but yet still playful persona, and she was a really likable character. I, I mean, she she was uh, still, you know, like very much the female love interest, but she was able to hold her own, and she had some great lines, but she didn't overstep her bounds. Like, you know, that's a big pet peeve of mine in these films when the, you know, the female character is like, I'm just as good as the guys, and I'm going to rub their faces in it. You know, she was able to be on par with everyone else and just contribute to the film. Everybody was good. All The cast was very good. Just like Fast and Furious, it kind of had a community feel that they tried to create, and it worked. I really thought everyone was well cast. Everyone was very likable, instantly likable. They cast very likable looking actors. Uh, and, so, and even Dominic Cooper as the villain did a really good job of being the smarmy villain. He did a very nice job. I just, I'm really just so caught off guard with how good this movie is, and I really uh, recommend that you see it. And I recommend that you see it in 3D. I actually don't think it's worth seeing in 2D because you're not going to get what Scott Wow is trying to do here. You're going to miss the whole point of the movie, and that's to show these car races in 3D. So I highly recommend it. Put that trailer out of your mind uh, and just go in there and uh, be really uh, amazed at a great action movie. And as I said, the best car racing film that I've ever seen. And if this is the beginning of video game films, if this is the kind of quality we can expect, we are in for a fun ride. All right, so that's my review of Need for Speed. Please write your own thoughts down below. Uh, I imagine a lot of people have not seen it because it's doing so poorly, but uh, if, you, if maybe this review inspires you to go, come back and share uh, your thoughts about it. So thank you for watching, and you can check out some more episodes right now.